By the 1975-76 season, some of the ABA franchises were on the verge of financial collapse. There were no national TV deals, and all of this resulted in an overall lack of attendance in the stands. So the salaries really started to escalate. And by es escalating the salary, it was decided that one of the things we ought to do is try to get a merger. So we got together with them and we had our guys meet with their guys. And we were ultimately able to get a merger agreement worked out between the ABA and the NBA. The Denver Nuggets, the New York Nets, the San Antonio Spurs, and the Indiana Pacers all joined the NBA. The Kentucky Colonels and the Spirits of St. Louis were compensated, then dissolved. The unfortunate Virginia Squires folded less than a month before merger talks were finalized. Well, the NBA merged with the ABA because it was advantageous to the NBA to do so. They did it because they saw in the American Basketball Association a lot of the things that they wanted to incorporate in their league including some extraordinarily successful professional franchises, which was seen on television sets all over the country. What some people feared, but couldn't have predicted at the time of the merger, was how well or how poorly the ABA players and teams would do in the newly expanded NBA. First NBA All-Star game after the merger, Half the players were ABA players. All those young, talented kids that got their start in the ABA got to develop at an unbelievably high level and were able to go right into the NBA and be successful. And so in the ABA, you had hundreds of players who wouldn't have had an opportunity to play if this league did not exist. And you had guys having not a training ground, but a place to develop and hone in on their skill like Julius Irvin. Julius Irvin, we played at UMass, he was like a stiff. He couldn't get, he couldn't, he couldn't, he couldn't get it on because they were like, it's the NC2A, buddy, you can't pause and dunk. So we not only went in as partners, we went in as equal partners. And I think uh, it was because of the style of play and the opportunity to grow as young players. We didn't envision in our short history that some of our best, most energetic players would go on to be uh, terrific NBA coaches, but certainly Larry Brown, just a ferocious, tenacious uh, scrapper, a terrific player. But Larry and Doug Moe uh, were the, those dependable players, team players, and because they were team players, they, they became great team coaches. You know, I might have been a high school coach and a history teacher if it wasn't for the ABA. Because of that league, I've been able to coach on the highest level and experience things that I never thought I'd experience. If you look at the style of play, if you realize the three-point shot, if you see how this has become a world sport, the ABA had a lot to do with that. So I think if, if you were to ask anybody, it would not be a stretch of the imagination to say that today's NBA is more like the ABA than it is the old NBA.